Hi, my name is Andy Sykes. I'm an award-winning animator and illustrator based in the UK. Welcome to my lessons on Flash CS5. This is my website, hexjibber.com. You can check out my animation, my illustration, my interactive work, and also more of my video tutorials in Flash. Enjoy. Hi, and welcome to my lesson on animating text. I did a short lesson about uh, editing text, so I recommend you check that out if you haven't done already. But let's get started with making this text move around. Like with anything in Flash, if you want to tween it, you have to make text into a symbol. So if I right click and go convert to symbol, and uh, give my symbol the name text, it'll draw a bounding box around our text, and it's ready to tween. I think I'm going to use the new motion tweens for this, so make sure you've checked out my lesson on the new motion tweens. So next up, I need to extend my frame to frame 70 by inserting a frame and creating a motion tween. So in my first frame, I'm going to use the free transform tool to make my text really big. Stick it in the center of the frame. Then at frame 70, I'm going to make it quite small. And again, in the sort of center of the screen there. So let's play that through, and you can see that our text moves from the foreground into the sort of middle ground. So that would be really good for doing some credits or some text for a film. I'm going to ditch this layer and create a new one, so I'll delete content, bring my text in again, and start it off uh, on the left hand side of the screen out of shot. I'm going to create a motion tween again. And on frame 70, I'm going to move my text into the center. I might use the black selection tool just to straighten up that line. So you can see we've now got a motion tween of our text tweening into the screen like that. I'm going to get the motion editor up. And again, got my lesson on the motion editor to check out if this uh, is unfamiliar. I'm going to go down to my eases and choose bounce in and apply that to my basic motion. So we go bounce in. Let's collapse that. Check that out. You can see that our text now bounces into the center of the screen. So that'd be really good for opening credits or if you're wanting to have your menus bounce in in a user interface. But what if I want to edit the individual characters in a word independently? I can't just have them all in a symbol moving all together at the same time. So how do I do that? Well first off I'm going to create a new layer and ditch layer 2. I'm going to type some new text, type text again, there we go, and you can see that it's just in a text box at the moment, it's not a symbol. And what I can do next is right click on it and go to break apart, or if I undo that, if I hit Control B on the PC or Command B on the Mac, that also breaks it apart. And you can see that it separated my text into different drawing objects. So my text is now vector curves rather than text objects. So it means that I can edit them in exactly the same sort of way that I would a shape. I can mess about with them like so. Just to note uh, a difference between TLF text and classic text when you break it apart, you'll see that when I control B, break apart TLF text, then it separates into drawing objects. If I undo that and change it from TLF text to classic text, you'll see that when I break it apart, it breaks it down into individual letters that you can still edit as text rather than drawing objects. So I have to break it apart again and then I get it just as individual vectors. It doesn't make it into drawing objects. So it's actually a lot more convenient to use the new TLF text if you have it available in Flash CS5. But seeing as Flash has separated our letters for us so beautifully into drawing objects, I can make each one of these into a symbol. So I'm going to right click on T, convert to symbol, call it T, and it's still a graphic. Do the same for all the other letters, E, convert to symbol, make that to an E, X, and T, 
pretty small. And you'll remember in some of my earlier lessons I said that when you're tweening symbols, each symbol needs to be on a separate layer. That's still true with text, but instead of having to separate all these layers manually, Flash does a really nice little trick for that. Now that I've converted all of my drawing objects into symbols, I can right click on them and go distribute to layers. And you'll see what Flash has done is it's used the name of the symbol to name the layer. So I've got T, E, X and T small. And I've got a blank layer three where it was originally. So we're now ready to animate these letters independently. Now we could apply the same bouncing effect to all of our different letters. So we need to create a motion tween in each one of our letter layers like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to move them all off the bottom of the screen like this and then move them all back on at the end of our animation like that so you can see at the moment they're all moving together but what I'm going to do now is stagger these motion tweens so the different letters come in at different times I want my big T to start and come in first I want my E to come in slightly after the big T so I'm going to hold down command on the Mac or control on the PC and slide my first keyframe so that it starts a bit later and I'm going to do the same for X but I'm going to make it even later on and do the same for the small t. I've staggered when those letters begin to come on the screen. So let's play that through. You can see that they bubble up like that and we can add some extra effects in the motion editor. So if I add bounce in for those, I can apply that to my T. I need to add it again and apply it to my other letters. So that's E. X and the smaller T. There we go. So let's check that out, see what it looks like. There we go. That's our text, each letter being animated independently, bouncing into our screen. But we could apply different animations to each one of our letters. So if I clicked on E and decided that I wanted that to rotate two times as it comes on, we can do that. So there we go, we've got our E bouncing in, but also rotating at the same time. I might decide that I want X to have a different motion preset. So I could choose a sawtooth wave and apply that. So let's play that through. You see that X is behaving very differently to all the other letters. I might even decide that I want my small T to have more of a curved tween, like that. So it kind of comes in from the side. You can see we can start getting some really interesting effects with our text if we animate our letters independently. Equally, uh, you can apply basic eases to all your letters and rotation as I just showed you. I might decide that I want my big T to fade out as the animation goes along. So if I click on my last keyframe, select my T symbol and go to color effects, alpha, pull my alpha down to zero, play that through. We've now got our T fading out. So that gives you an idea of the kinds of things you can do when you start playing about with text. Have a go yourself and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi, if you enjoyed this lesson, why not consider checking out the Hexjibber coloring and activity book on my website, hexjibber.com. It's suitable for kids and adults alike and you can get it from Amazon, play.com and WH Smiths. Cheers.